And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Welcome, everybody. It's time for Make Oak Money. Second to last day of the quarter, Thursday. Good to see everyone. Let's uh, get into the business here. This is me. I've been around the block a couple of times. Uh, I've been with Top Step since 2011, and I am so lucky to be doing what I'm doing. Love the markets and love all of you. The CFTC disclaimer. What we are doing here is for educational purposes only. We don't want any, we, we are not suggesting the purchase or sale of any particular product or security. This reminds us how risky futures can be. These are leveraged products. You can lose all or more than your initial, your initial investment, which means you should only be using risk capital. To me, risk capital is money I can afford to lose, but you're not gonna have to do that. Succeed in the trading combine use our risk capital. Again, this is a live account. This is my account. You guys are coming up with the trade ideas, but again, we're not suggesting the purchase or sale of any of these for any of you. There is no past performance that is indicative of any future results. Simulated performance has certain limitations. Of course it does. Mostly that there's no accountability, no rules, and no consequences. Remember again, this is for educational purposes only. The rules for Make Hope Money, kindness and respect are expected above everything. There's always differences of opinions in markets. That's what makes them so good. You can have a couple of people unable to talk. Decisions are going to be decided by you. Use the chat rooms. Content, content is going to be helpful. Use the chat rooms to discuss trades. We'll poll you to see if we agree or disagree on taking a trade. We're focusing on the MES for the for opportunities for now, and we're going to just not take trades, just trade. We're not taking losing trades, which is, of course, a joke. We all know that losses are part of trading, and feedback for Make Hogue Money is crucial for its continued growth and expansion. So here we are. We're right on the open. We're up against the overnight high. I don't have any trade ideas right now. I've been kind of busy. Who wants to chat today? Who wants to chat? Uh, I'm not going to give my brother Rick a, ch uh, uh, a, a choice. Randolph, you're coming in. Ben, you're coming in too. So we got a couple of folks that we're going to be chatting with. Let me get the, 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 the speaker out here so that we can so we can hear everybody. Here we go. Good morning. Hey Mortimer. How you doing? Doing good. You? Yeah, doing all right. Doing all right. Feeling good. I uh, I was up real early this morning. I got up at a quarter a quarter of four. I had to take Luke and his buddy to the airport. Where are they going? Houston. Sox home opener today. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Mm -hmm. They got a buddy down there, too, so they're going to visit him, and they're going to the Sox home opener, or the Sox opener. It is opening day for baseball today, by the way. I forgot to mention that before, but, yeah, it's 160-some uh, games. Uh, I, got, um, I got something on the daily chart that might be worth looking at. Let's take a look. All right. <clears throat> How are you doing, Ben? Uh, well, I, I think I pulled a couple back muscles about a half hour ago. Not so good. <laughs> don't do that. I had to change a water bottle, and I don't know what I did, but, well, you know. I've, I've taken, I've, I've thrown my back out sneezing. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, it's one of those, that creep, it wasn't anything overt. It just all of a sudden, I felt the creaking in my back. I'm like, uh-oh. 
No, I hope you I'll hope take you, it easy on those now. Yeah, I hope it feels um, better soon. Yeah, let me see here. Okay, so do you, do you have like a daily bar chart here? Can you see it? Yep. Okay, so this is regular trading hours. You know, we're on the hard right here, way up here at 84 half right now. We got this 20 some point gap, but these, these, are important inflection points. I think 82 half right here, you can see it's in play right now. We're above this high way back here, which was a, a swing high, which massive sell-offs came from, right? All the way down there. Mm -hmm. That's at 82 half. So that could be a line of demarcation as to whether, you know, the market's trying to work its way down to close this gap or not. Um, we saw real quickly, I'm gonna pull in a 10 minute TPO chart. You can see this line is right here, 82 half. I almost shorted it, but I thought, no, it's too early. They're going to fake you out. And that's exactly what happened. They, they uh, went and you got an unfinished auction down here. So it may continue, but then they came back through to, I don't know how high it went up to, but, um, you know, here's another point where could short against this and the micros, you know, it's not too expensive to risk maybe the overnight high. And what didn't happen is we didn't take that out within the first, well, three minutes so far, you know, so we may leave that for later. Like I think we did yesterday. Okay. So, um, Anyway, then the next one is at 73, 75. So that may be a target place or another place where all right, it's inevitable that it's going to come back down to this trend line um, right here, which I don't know what the level is about put across it on, but you can see I just took these highs, just made a trend line there. Got it. So th those are important points I want to point out, and then I'll turn it back over. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I kind of, you know, do, do we want to... Do we want to poll everybody to see if maybe we look for a short up here against the overnight high? I'm going to send that poll. Uh, oh, I, I need to mention something. Um, I, without sharing my screen again, I don't think that's necessary, but further to the left on, uh, let's see, let's see what the date is. Here's, on February 17th, we had a gap down. So there's a gap high there at 90 half, and then there's an unclosed gap up to 97 quarter. So between um, February 16th and 17th, there's a gap that still has not been uh, revisited. And, and also there's, a, to the left, there's a lot of still short covering fuel above us. February 17th, right here. Yeah. There's your gap. So that gap closed takes, would take us up to 97 quarter. Right. And the thing is, you know, um, we, we may get a, a move down, but and to buy new buyers to start fueling this short, you know, what, what's termed a stealth, stealthy short coming rally where it moves and fits and starts and lots of, uh -huh. you know, it really gets, I still have not, it, it can screw me up. It gets you know, everybody like I, chopped up. Yeah. I start, I start turning into the contrarian. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of those two. So here's what I was looking at yesterday. I mean, it's, it's almost a carbon copy of, of yesterday, right? We have all of this overnight longs. I'm looking to, I'm looking for opportunities to buy weakness. So I'm waiting. I was actually short early yesterday. I'm waiting for a deeper pullback to adjust inventory to get all these longs out. But the market wouldn't do it. It didn't go very far in that direction, right? So when I'm short, I'm thinking, you know, there's a, there's a weak low here, but we're starting to see delta negative. Delta negative. So I'm thinking, this, there's, something else, there, there's something else going on here. So I covered the short. I ended up, ended up finding a long later on. But that delta divergence just piled on all day long. So we have... You know, shorter time frame traders that were long that 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 kind of uh, reconciled those longs and ended up getting too short during the day yesterday, creating our 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 move to the upside late in the day. Well, we're in the same situation. We've got overnight longs here. How much are they going to pull back before we're going to be able to look for opportunities for longs? Dun, dun, dun. This is correct delta for the day session right now. 
we have long delta. We have buyers, and we're at the low of the range so far today. So is this indicating potential sellers? Yep. That's what I'm thinking. I sold it right out of the gate. Did you? Yep. I had the order in before it opened. I traded the ETF, so I love bought SH, which is short S and P. Short S and P. So you're up. You're up now. So one, well, uh, let's see here. Hang on one second. Opening range is one tick from the high of the session. Do we? All right. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull everybody. Are we? We're gonna see if we can't find a short somewhere up here against the overnight high if we get the opportunity. So the question is, do we look for a short against the overnight high if we get the opportunity? Uh, let me send it in YouTube as well. Between 4090 and 4100, that's a huge psychological barrier. Short against the high on YouTube. Hello, everybody in YouTube, by the way. Ed, Eric, I sent you the Zoom link. Thinking around in here in the same two area, maybe an opportunity. It's not super close to the high, but you could risk above the open, above the morning high. Um, so you like it here? Well, I, I know we washed in and out of past that 82.50 level, like prior high of day, though, back on the 17th. Mm -hmm. Now it's solidly below it for the moment. So I'm not sure we're going to get another opportunity. Maybe that's FOMO talking. Um, but we may not get enough, another opportunity closer to the high. And if we do, it, 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 you know, the seesaw balance may tend to like, okay, we're going to go take out the overnight high if we get too close to it. Well, I mean, I was kind of feeling that, that FOMO idea as well, trying to barrel into a short here. So at least if we get up to 82, we've got a little bit of a pullback to lean on to, to make us feel better about FOMO. Oh yeah, that's where I put in my. I've got I've got one rest to get eighty two myself. All right. Hey Mortimer, I got a question for everybody. Yeah. What do you think of this all-out war on the dollar is going to have any effect on the markets? Because Brazil and China just broke a trade deal agreement that ditched the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. They want to. Everybody, all the Western countries want to just stop. Using the dollar as the all currency. What do you think that's going to affect that would have on the markets long term? I would think metals would be the place to go. You think what? Metals. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about indices. What do you think it's going to affect that would have on the stock market when that's, you know, and again, it's just starting. They've been talking about it with the BRICS nations for a while. Right. If they want to just, they just want to tear the dollar apart. The DXY is, a, you know, lower and low now. And they're saying it could go down to 96. It's uh -huh. 102. Uh -huh. I, I'm i not smart enough. Do you enough. think that would have a, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that the market's rallying. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this, of part of that, I think, is because they're going to they're gonna re-regulate the banks again. Yeah, I know. I know, John, I agree. I think, you know, they want to go digital because then the government control how much you spend and where you spend it and what you spend it on. Right. You know. And I don't like, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, but silver was up 50 cents. It's come back a little bit. Gold's, you know, about unchanged. So. We'll We've got a mandate for this trade, so we're going to, we're in it now. Yeah. <clears throat> 66 and, and on YouTube liked it. 84 on Zoom. So we'll see what happens. We're, our stop is above the overnight high. You're scaring me about this whole dollar thing, though. I, you know, I'm, I'm not smart enough to know what that means or what it's, what's going to happen. You know, I don't know anybody that is. Um, but, you know, everything in, in crude is dollars. Investments in the U.S. is all dollars. Mm -hmm. 
the, I mean, all China is so invested in in U.S. Treasuries that how are they, you know, what are they going to be buying them in yuan? Well, China, Russia, and all the all the BRICS nations have been buying up gold like crazy and silver. There's the the inventory at COMEX and LMA has never been lower. The premiums on that stuff is is stupidly high because because none of the dealers have it. <clears throat> and the government doesn't like that. No, no. I, I watch that because I, you know, I play the metals, John. You right, know right, right. And I've been, you know, I started buying this stuff down when solar was at fourteen and twelve dollars. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember we were having a lot of conversations about it back then. Yes. And I felt I was late to the game, but right now it's you know. It appears not so. Well, you're only late to the game if it goes lower. <laughs> well, average, you know, average. Right. All right, so we are holding this short now. I will say I, I would, I'm not going to hesitate to flatten if I start to see a real move to deal rent high because market internals are strong. Okay. But it does look like buyers are getting stopped at the moment. So I don't know what that means. You know, there's mm. a lot of limits overhead, and Delta is now up to five thousand positive, <clears throat> six thousand, and we're not really rallying. Uh, there's a here's a good comment. Sam says here, China has billions of U.S. dollars. I believe they have a very strong control over its value, more than we might imagine. Okay, so they start dumping dollars. Yeah, that's gonna that'll get ugly. No, well, they are. They've been buying gold, like it's going out of style. Right. So Edwards got a question here. What does it mean when there's a strong positive delta and and price isn't going in that in that direction? It means that the shorter time frame traders, pea shooters like me, are using market orders to lift offers. They're buying on the offer. That's positive delta. So you would think that price would go in that direction. They're the aggressors. They're lifting offers. But price so far has not been. It's going in the opposite direction. Here's the profile. Here's the regular trading hour range. We've got pretty strong positive delta with the market hanging in the bottom quarter of the day session range today. There may be some longer time frame sellers now in the market. So Edward, yesterday in the S&Ps, we had the market trying to go lower on very deep negative delta, but the delta kept st stayed negative all day long and price continued to push higher until finally late in the day all those those weaker hands shorter time frame traders want to go home short they have to buy it that's where that 10 10 15 point move came at the end of the day yesterday they so, got squeezed yes they got they got squeezed they were long they 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 re they reconciled those longs and then they started selling into a stronger buyer. So we're looking at Delta as a, well, positive Delta with price moving lower early in the session as a potential stronger seller in the marketplace. The, the bigger players don't use market orders or they try not to, to accumulate positions. They'll, they'll place offers and just replenish them and replenish them and replenish them and let the short time frame traders keep beating themselves against it until they figure out they're not going to get paid and then they go the other direction and then they'll move the offers either higher or lower depending on what's going on. Now what we're looking at here is a very early attempt at, at, at making an assumption that we're seeing a longer, stronger time frame trader that may be now turned seller because we've got positive delta and price isn't really moving higher all that well. It's got a hold at 48 area. 
bounce it, uh, test it, bounce it, test it, and then if it rallies from there, then it's maybe it's got some strength. So yes, Edward, yeah. positive delta is buying on the offer. Negative is selling on the bid. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. AKA market orders. Yep. Yeah, and market orders are considered the aggressors because it takes action. A resting bid sits there until a market order hits it. A resting offer hangs there until a market order lifts it. So your aggressors this morning by Delta are buyers. But if price doesn't go in that direction, there's somebody else there. Soon. Right. Then they, they, then they start giving up and it's unfolding. It, you know, right. right. Correct. What we're for. Then, then they say rut roll. Yep. And this 4086 level, we were we there was somebody was discussing it on Make Hope Money. This is the 15% off the all-time high, 4086. That's exactly 15% off the all-time high. <clears throat> Not quite a fib number, but no. No, I just like to put them on there because you know yeah. when when there's a when there's a big break, I like to know what percentage the market has gone to. Yeah. They say a fifteen percent move is um, is a is a bear market, right? Yes. Uh, Beswede. All right. So this is Tiki. Cumulative delta, you can see it right here, Tiki cumulative delta line. But I have it set to reset at eight o'clock. You got to put it on <laughs> session, and then you want it to start at eight o'clock, which is gonna, which is going to really start it at eight thirty, if you're in Central Time. So the S and P is open at eight thirty Central. If you're if you're on the East Coast. It opens at 9.30. You got to do this in your time zone. So, and then I'll put show value and show value. So it's going to start. I don't know why it does this where you got to start at a half an hour early because I have several platforms and one of them I really trust as far as <laughs> Delta is concerned. So once you upload del cumulative Delta line from the community indicators, then set it like this session start start hour half hour before the regular trading hour open and save it now it doesn't always represent it doesn't always present correctly you know um electronic trading isn't a perfect thing <laughs> we're starting to get a little heat here we're seeing really strong positive delta the the buyers are very aggressive here but if they don't get what they're paying they're what they're looking for they're going to end up too long. So, um, what was I going to say? See, when we were in the pit, Rick, you know this. I mean, you used to be able to stay in the S&P pit and you could watch Goldman buy 5,000 big S&Ps. And then you'd, you could watch Merrill Lynch buy 5,000 big S&Ps. And you could watch Shy Corp buy 5,000 big S&Ps. They're not buying it from each other. They're buying it from the locals. They're buying it from the traders in the pit. The traders in the pit are, are basically getting shorter and shorter the more the bigger time frame traders buy from them. And at some point, they're going to go, you know what, this ain't working out. We're going to have to go the other direction. And being able to recognize whether the, when the pit is too long or too short is a way for us to take advantage of that, okay? Because when, when, when the short time frame traders are too long or too short, they're going to get squeezed if you can take advantage of that squeeze, you can put on some really good, nice trades, like the trade we put on yesterday in Make Hogue Money. We had a sense that longer term buyers were present in the marketplace yesterday and that they had the short time frame traders stuck. Well, they did because by the end of the day, we had extended the range 15 points 
We we took a trade. We had a we had a ten dollar winner. Yes, a ten point winner yesterday, and all because we recognized that our direct competitors. And when I say our direct competitors, I mean other short time frame, weaker hands. You know, possibly even under under capitalized day traders were all the wrong way. So that's you know in the pit we could see it. And here, all we see are a bunch of lines and some profiles in a dome. How do how are we going to recognize when there is another presence in the marketplace, a longer time frame presence in the marketplace? And we used to know who was buying or who was selling. To yes. Us, made a yep. And the size of the orders too. So. Yep. And a lot of you know, who is that? Well, it's Soros or it's Prector or it's Tudor. Tudor Jones, yeah, it, it, yep, and all those all those big big players like that all had accounts at all the big brokerage firms, so they could they could move their 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 business around. You know, Shy Corp would do two thousand, Witter do two thousand, Bay should do two thousand, Merrill Lynch would do two thousand, Goldman would do two thousand, and EF Hutton would do two thousand. Remember EF Hutton? Remember Tommy Baldwin? Uh, yeah, he was in the bonds. Yep. No oh, man, he could it'd be a free fall, and he'd just take it all. Take everything. E. speaks. People listen. Isn't that the commercial? Yes. Part? Yep. Yep. When E. F. Hutton talks, people oh, listen. Yeah. Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch. But we're bullish. Yeah. We're bullish on America. Yeah. And then there was. I start to see a little. And there was. Uh, Smith Barney, they yeah, earn it. They're gonna, hit, they're gonna hit some stops in a minute. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rob Schneider was on that TV this morning. He's down there for the Houston opener. Huh. But he's these guys doing a stand-up or something down there. But they had him on TV. Huh. He's a funny guy. Yeah, I, I like his movies. Yeah. He's starting to see your delta pull off a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yep, that's that would be kind of reconciliation of the squeeze. Yeah. Still, I mean, that's pretty strong delta for this early in the day. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a little... You know, as soon as I hit out of this, though, it'll flush. Oh, of course. But the market loves to make a liar out of us. Yeah. That's hard on me psychologically when I do something like yeah. that. And it, you know, it's like, what's wrong? You know, I start to second guess my confidence, my, you know, my, my patience or whatever. You know, I've been in this, this or another trade like a long time. The moment I click out, <laughs> it's just too soon. I could have, I could have been all right if I would have waited. Yeah, VWAP's lining up with some lows and some old highs. So when do you see this um, China buying all this gold and the them signing off or doing contracts against using the U.S. dollar? When do you see that manifesting and pushing gold prices higher? Rick, this one's for you. Well said, I missed that. Sorry. So we talked about, um, I think you said New Zealand and somebody like contracting not to use the U.S. dollar. Between that and gold, China buying up gold, when do you see this really manifesting in gold prices? It's It's been going on for months. And uh, if you go on YouTube, you can, you, you'll, uh, there's a lot on there about this, you know, about, you know, I guess you'd call them the uh, the know-it-alls. I mean, you're talking people that have been in the business for 30, 40 years. And, you know, one reason that they're doing this is is not only to crush the dollar, but they get around sanctions. Uh, if they pay for oil and gold or they, you know, or the wine uh, with Russia or whatever. So one way to circumvent the sanctions is to not use the dollar and 
they've got it out for the dollar. I mean, it's just, if you, you know, that's what I've been reading and that's what I've been learning. And, uh, I just, my quandary is how it's going to affect the stock markets. So, so far, it, you know, they've got a mind of their own, but you know, I don't know when that, you know, again, dollar, the DXY, where is it? Uh, I've got it here. It's down to 102, 112. And, you know, it was at 103.20 a couple days ago. And then before that, it was up around 104. So, yeah, I've got it down below that's one, one reason, 102. That's now. one reason, the, and that's one reason the metals, gold and silver, especially silver, have been just so freaking strong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, so I've been playing short stock market. I actually shorted yesterday and then covered it because it wasn't doing what I wanted to do and I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I put it back out this morning on this gap up. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to give it again that 4090 to 4100 range there is huge. So yeah. it's it's hard for me to go long into that. It's got to prove, it's got to hold that 4080, uh, bounce off it a few times, and then if it starts moving up, then it'll probably make me a believer short term. But again, it's tough, just psychologically, it's tough for me to, to be long going into that 4100 plus or minus. That's my two cents. But yeah, you should read about the, what's going on with the dollar, with the BRICS nations, and for China and Brazil to team up mm -hmm. as they are with Russia. I mean, this is in Fox Business, you know, Brian, Brazil, China strike trade deal agreement to ditch U.S. dollar. And that's in our part of the world. Yeah. It's in, it's in Barron's too, 18 hours ago. And then here, uh, February 18th, Russia and China partners in de-dollarization. I mean, these are all just uh, headlines on, uh, on my phone. New TPO here. Yeah. Here, why China tang China's currency tangles with the dollar. I mean, I'll tell you all about it. It's everywhere, isn't it? Well, here, foreign policy, this is this is from September. China's regional de-dollarization plans are speeding up. Here, opinion, the dollar is our superpower, and Russia and China are threatening it. So, okay, you know, I'm not it's, it's not something that happens overnight, but we'll see. Right. Boy, oh boy, we got a lot of very aggressive buyers here. Yeah. They may win, who knows? We're, yeah. st we're still in it. Just took out the high by I'm a tick. I may go again because we're back in the overnight range, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're trying. They're trying. Sam in uh, in the Zoom meeting is saying he studies politics, and the more you look into China and what they're doing, you realize it's not it, that it's that it is scary stuff, not just for the <laughs> stock market. But they're our friends. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that's why they won't return. They won't return Biden's phone calls, right? Yeah, they're they're not they're not going to eat our lunch. They must not have enough chocolate chip ice cream. Jeez. Uh, don't get us started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should, I'm crossing the line, or I'm straddling. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm back in a little bit better price, but 
Okay, good. We'll see, huh? So buyers are very aggressive, man. Yeah, they tried. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, but no, no real extension passed except one point passed. One, one yeah, one tick, right? And the way the way it took it out was to me, it had message in there. So it was like you have all these buyers, you know, buying, 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 and the limits are holding them down. And then all of a sudden they sort of disappear. And then um, you get that push. But that cover at the same time. That's that explosion as like a two point just jump, and then it's over and immediately comes back in. And that's the ones I like. So I'm I'm riding this one hopefully for a while. Edward, have we opened the trading room yet? Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be opening Top Step TV soon, which is gonna be, you know, a much longer market based, news based. Yeah, we don't. I try not to talk about politics too much here. Ooh, this is all about the markets. Amazing how, how our fucking pets just control us. <laughs> yep, you're still getting up at 2 in the morning letting them, letting them out so that they can uh, get a treat, right? She went out once last night. The night before, she slept all the way through. But mm. I probably, she's probably gone out the door five times this morning to do it. I think she knows she gets a treat when she comes in. Yeah, so absolutely. She got, yeah, they she got, got me trained. You got you trained, 100%. Yeah. Uh, Greg, ADX and, and DMI, um, I, I used to focus, um, I used to have yeah. ADX on my charts. Um, somebody, somebody turned me on to it and I had it on there for a, for a while. Fred, you might remember ADX on my charts. But I took it off. It, it, it didn't really do what I needed it to do for me. Well, it's just... Oh, here we go. Uh, Besweed, $500 from passing the trading combine. Good job. Been close before and blown it. Try not to, trying to focus on the process, but it's terrifying to take a trade. Any advice? Get used to no matter how good. Hey, Bob, you got to feed them at night so they don't go to bed with an empty stomach. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, where, where are you getting now? 78 was a good level, but I'm, I'm waiting for 75 now myself. I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> hey, John, just let it ride, man. That's so my goal. So, Besweed, every day, whether things are going well, whether things are going bad, whether you're close to a goal, whether you're, whether you're, what, try not to have goals. Number one, every day, sit down, do your prep, calm yourself, and remind yourself you are starting from zero. Every day, you're starting from zero. Every day you're starting from zero. That'll that'll I, I hope steal you up to just kind of re recognizing that every day is different, every trade is different, everything we start we start from zero. If you had if you made a thousand dollars yesterday, to, today you start from zero. Go and flat. That's really helped me um, to really think conscientiously think that through, if not say it out loud, that today is start fresh because I've had. This just recently happened to me. You know, I have a bad day, and I come in the next day, and I still have residual emotions of that, like, got to make it back and sort of a hurry-up mentality, and that it just plays into my trading and screws me up. Yeah, and, you know, having daily financial goals or time-based goals to when I want to get to a certain level I actually work the opposite because 
I, you know, for a while I had a 40 tick profit, a 40 tick daily profit target and I'd get up to 38 ticks. My clerk would say, uh, you know, I think we're there. And I'd say, nah, let me get a, let me get this couple more ticks. Oh, ruined more days just trying to get those last couple of ticks just because I thought I, you know, because I needed it. I had to get there. That's, that's where I think kind of the, the 10% rule came in. If you're in a winning trade and you're within 10% of your profit target, you can take the trade at a profit and still call it a full profit target. So here's VWAP, Rick. Yeah, I know. I know. What, what level is VWAP? 76.50. I mean, it's, you could take profit here and then if it, Bounces, you can reload. I, you know, again, that 4080 area or whatever, if it stays below that, I think it's going to head south. That's just. Yeah, if we, if we can't hold VWAP, we're still positive Delta, but we've lost about 3,000 of it on this reconciliation. Yeah, they're giving up. Yeah. They buy the high, they sell the low. They buy the high, they sell the low. Yeah. They buy the high, they sell the low. But like John said, every day is a new day. You know, if you, if you lose money one day, you got to kind of th- rethink what happened, what you did wrong. You know, um, try not to make the same mistake twice is the, the key to this whole thing. <laughs> even, though, even though we all do. Yeah, I'm laughing, thinking, well, let's see. How many, how many mistakes have I made a million times before that I've already done today? Yeah. This ain't easy. I'm at one short here, Katie. And don't be greedy. That's the other thing. (laughs) Every time I'm in a good trade and I start thinking, well, this could be worth a lot more. I've trained myself to get out. Well, that's Murphy's law. Yep. It, and then, and then, it, then it'll like drop another couple hundred points. Yep. But if I don't, I'll get stopped out. <laughs> yep. It's hard to, to <clears throat> condition yourself if you got a winning trade. Like technically, I should probably add to my position by all rights. So hard. And, you know, I'm not risking a lot, even at this level, but the way it's acting, I'm going to see what it does around 4075. It gets through VWEB. Yeah, John, impatience and FOMO foil my entry location, trying to pinpoint my root cause for failure or success. We all have that FOMO. We all, we all, it costs all of us in trade location. You know, here's one thing, John, that I can suggest that might help. When we put this trade on, I knew our stop was going to have to be above the overnight high. Okay. And in the S&Ps, we got a, we got a full point above the overnight high. In the micros, we got one tick above the overnight high. So I knew my stop was going to be there. Where is good enough trade location for me to manage that risk? And I don't think we got very good trade location on the short here this morning. I would have preferred closer to my stop. But if you, if you look for your entries based on the stop you have to put in, technically, you'll, you may find that you're going to be able to avoid some of that FOMO, get better trade location on some of those trades, and, you know, better trade location means bigger profit targets, too. Entry, entry, where, you enter, where you enter is half the, half the game. If there's a swing low in the overnight, it's 75, 75, and then another one just below it. So we might get a, um, once we hit that level and break it, we might, might see a move fast down to 73, 75. But I'm out. I'm out at 75. If you can get it. Okay. And I, I never got filled on that add-on. 
Yeah, a little support here. There's some previous lows. You got VWAP, so let's see what happens. Yeah, VWAP bumped me out. And, and, a, and a previous high almost. It's those so. VWAP buyers that are really bumming me out. Well, let's get out and push. Ten percent rule. Yeah, I don't even have a target in here yet, though. Delta's been dropping now. Okay, it's down around twenty-eight hundred. That was our go. fast flush to seventy-three, seventy-five. There you go. I'm out at seventy-five. There you go. So we've got nice. we've got nice trade. We've got twenty-six hundred, twenty-three hundred more stuck longs. All right, there's, I can see some. So seventy-three, seventy-five now is that prior high. It's similar to that eighty-two half level. So you know there might be to add on in here. Sorry, Vince. Might be a good idea. I'm looking for one more push. Don't get greedy. All right, I'm out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, send me, send me my dollar. My stun, that was, that was like what, eight to 10 points or something? Yeah, yeah, eight points, nice. I'll take that. Otherwise known as a scalp around here. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bisweed, yeah. you, you did it? Yeah. You did it? You said you were within 14 and had to make another trade. You did it? I think you're going to see sellers start to come in and now. Yeah, see, I was looking for that last push to get us back down to even as far as Delta is concerned. Yeah. Yeah, Ed Edward Wachak, I think that's how you pronounce it. He said we just wiped out all the buyers since 5 a.m. today. That's, yeah, they're underwater if that's the yep. um, our period that the underwater is correct. And we not only those, we took out all those delta longs that were trying to push this thing higher. I think there's still more to the downside on this, but but we're we're gonna take this and be happy. It's a couple of well, maybe one drink downtown in Chicago. It's twenty dollars for a drink. What does a beer go for downtown now in a bottle? Well, well, it depends. I mean, if you go to Series, they're, 50, they're 50 bucks. Series is reasonable. Last time I was there, I think it was like seven fifty for a drink, and it's a drink. It's you know. Remember, remember, beer is food. Yes. And whiskey is the 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 nectar of the gods. So around around here. Um, a domestic pitcher's average is around 10 bucks. Uh, that's nuts, you know. But I recently found a Monday deal for eight bucks. Uh, so that's, I haven't seen that those prices in a while. <laughs> no, bring, they're, they're bring a couple empty uh, one gallons, clean ones, and then have them fill it up and take it home. In Chicago, if you're like, if, if you're like one of the, one of the cool places, a drink is easily $20. That's crazy. Easily $20. And you can get amazing. bottle service. They'll sell you like a bottle of Tito's for $200. So you can drink it there. They give you, you know, whatever mixers you want. Bottle service. It's crazy. Yeah. For that amount of money, they better give you mixers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here, just drink it out of the bottle. Yeah. Let's, th <laughs> let's throw you. <laughs> I've always thought if I, if I ever was in a place where I had a restaurant of any kind you know i i let pe i just maybe charge a corking fee but if people want to bring their own bottles of wine and things like that i think that'd be great we don't have anything like that around here i'm sure there are places like that in chicago mm -hmm. jack good morning long time listener on the prep first time on zoom it's really cool listening to the chats should have been coming to these webinars for a long time this level at vwap important for me 
bottom of a multi-day cumulative value area from the start of February and the high from pit session from last Tuesday. Thanks, Jack, for thanks for watching. Thanks for chiming in and saying good morning. We're glad you're here. Daniel, my pleasure. Dusty says last time he drank a beer, it was $2. <laughs> Don't you miss quarter beer night? Top deck. Liquidation. Remember that, John? Mm -hmm. Ten cent beers, quarter beer. Mixed drinks, Friday nights. And it wasn't always a good thing. <laughs> no. Probably not. Found the cheaper the beer is, the prettier the waitresses are. <laughs> stop going, stop going he, to Hooters. He can drink more. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're going to Hooters. No. Uh, Someone holding 72. Rick, you, you say you you own um, in gold. I mean, I don't know if that means you own ETFs or coins or, or bars or whatnot, but it's, <clears throat> are you dealing them? If you don't want it to answer, that's fine. Too, but, um, just wonder. Well, I do. Futures. I guess on the metals, um, both, both ETFs and physical. <clears throat> but the, uh, the stock market, I can't short it. Right. So I do the inverse EP ETF, and it's you can do multipliers. Sometimes I got one times, two times, three times. So right now I'm I'm just long SH, which is short the S and P's, and it's a one one off. It's not multiplied like you can do the SQQQ and be short the Nasdaq, and it's that's twice the reaction. To the what the Nasdaq's doing, and that 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 can get really volatile quickly. Nasdaq, hell yeah. Uh, don't think about going to try and get um, Randall's gold because he's got a lot of steel there too. Uh huh. <laughs> how, how high above um, the overnight high was your was your stop in the NES? Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember? Was it two ticks or more? Right, you said it cleared it by one tick, but it. Uh, hang on, I'm pretty sure I can find it here. Um, orders. Well, uh, yes. Didn't you have it like at three or four ticks over there? Um, what the heck? I've never been a huge Hooters fan, Fred, but it has a lot of good qualities, you know, but I got to tell you that I go in there sporadically, like, um, like maybe once a year or something. And every time I go in there, the girls just get so much younger. It, it's, uh, creeps me out. Yeah. But of yeah. course they're all staying the same age, I think. Yeah. And then you look at them, you know, they didn't make them like that when I was that age. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in high school, I was super selective. And now I look back and everybody that age is beautiful. I don't care who you are. <laughs> if I could do high school over again, it wouldn't hurt me. Not me. We had a blast. What are you looking for, John? You were short at 82. Right, so right. I figured you're I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be exact. I'm, I I don't really remember exactly. I think it was up around 89. You're too old to be exact. You're like... I think it was around right around 89, Ben. Okay. Yeah, around 89. Oh! Well, I've got to keep on keeping on here, folks. 
Great session today. Always love it. More to come. Uh, don't forget about the session with Jared Tendler today. That's going to be a good one. Is there anything between now and then? Uh, no. Great session, guys. Good luck trading, everybody. Thanks, Rick. Randolph, love you. Uh, no, there's yeah. nothing else between now and 2 o'clock. Oh, okay. and, and that's going to be it for the for the day. And then prep yeah, tomorrow. And that's it. Love, Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Trade well, everyone. Thank you, Ben.